breaks down the substrate in the environment and then it's going to uh, uh, absorb the uh, products of the uh, reaction. So, first one, tributyrin. Okay, so we have for our uh, substrate uh, triglyceride, okay, the uh, enzyme is called lipase, and the uh, products are monoglyceride, uh, glycerol is one fatty acid plus fatty acids. And of course, what we're going to do is tell the uh, outcome by the uh, clearing. I happen to not quite remember what we use, but I have on my chart. Sriracha or Staph aureus is positive, uh, Sriracha is positive, and also Enterococcus is positive. And so we have no Sriracha here, it's not red obviously, but, but you can see these right here are showing a response. So this one has a hint of a response, but that's just due to the fact that it's old, so that's not a real response. All right, skim milk auger, casein is the uh, milk protein, makes the uh, auger white. Uh, KCase is the enzyme. Our uh, products of protein digestion are always going to be amino acids, not specified, but what we look for is the clearing, of course, in the auger to show that it has broken down the, the white protein. So uh, bacillus is our positive example here. And then on the other side, we use E. coli. So that's, uh, of course, not positive. Uh, gelatin, uh, we have collagen is the uh, substrate, and then collagenase or gelatinase for the enzyme. So again, breaking it down into amino acids, but we tell whether it's by the negative by a liquefaction of the gelatin. And so the one on the top is positive, that's bacillus again. The one on the bottom is E. coli, not liquefied. So again, you see the Collagen itself is the substrate, and it's also the breakdown as the product actually gives us the liquefied effect as well. All right, for the starch, uh, we have um, the uh, starch is our substrate, amylase is the enzyme, maltose is the product, and what we're looking for is, of course, secretion of the uh, 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 amylase into the environment to break down the starch. Uh, we have to use the reagent uh, iodine, Lugol's iodine, because it will combine with intact starch. So when you put it on the plate, you will see dark blue, black, wherever starch is still present, but where starch has been broken down. And so, of course, obviously around the colony here, you don't see dark blue, black. So that means there's no starch right here. And again, iodine is our uh, reagent here. Bacillus, again, is the uh, positive organism. All right, and then for the DNA auger, now DNA is the substrate, nucleotides, DNA nucleotides are the uh, products, and then the uh, DNAase, deoxyribonuclease, is the uh, enzyme. So again, we've got that green colored auger. Again, this is one here that I want you to just recognize that inoculated. Uh, but the uh, clearing right here is positive for uh, the uh, deoxyribonuclease enzyme. So Sriracha, which we got to look into that right here, is the uh, uh, example that we used. And I don't remember if we used anything else in here. Anybody remember if we used a different one this time? No, I recall now. Sriracha, I think we used is our positive one. You do want to think about what we use this time. Sometimes my stuff isn't exactly the same as we use the following semester. So if I, I'm not sure, I just make that kind of hot. All right, so deal about the uh, carbohydrate uh, fermentation. So, you know, the substrates are the different sugars. So one tube had glucose, one blue tube had lactose, one tube had sucrose. Uh, phenol red is our uh, pH indicator, and what we're looking for is either acidic fermentation products or alkaline. And then we also look to whether, see whether it produces gas. So when you see this yellow color in the broth, that means, first of all, it is acidic. So it has used that particular sugar and broken it down into uh, acidic products. And then the, the tube on the interior right here, which is called the Durham tube, we tell whether it produces gas by 
whether we have a space right here, which represents a gas bubble in this case, or the liquid is all the way to the top. And so if there is a space, that means it does produce gas, whereas the liquid goes all the way to the top, it does not. This also is one I want you to recognize uninoculated because of the upside down Durham tube in it. You can't tell, of course, which sugar is which in there, but you want to know it's a carbohydrate too. Uh, e. coli is acid and gas for both the uh, lactose and the glucose. Okay, I do want you to remember that as an outcome, lactose and glucose with gas. Here's the example of a uh, acidic uh, response, uh, but we have no gas. And you can see the liquid in the tube is all the way to the top of the tube, no gas. Now notice that there is a bubble right here. That bubble is not in the tube. That's on the outside of the tube. So again, that is not an indicator that it produces gas. Again, the bubble has to be in the tube to indicate that it produces gas. So the uh, Staph aureus was acid without gas for all the sugars, right? all three of the sugars. All right, and then Pseudomonas is a uh, consistently alkaline type. Usually it doesn't matter what the sugar. Uh, so again, the red color indicates alkaline response, alkaline products, I should say. As you can see in the uh, tube, the liquid's all the way to the top, so there is no uh, no uh, gas. So for this, again, E. coli, you want to remember, is acid and gas with glucose and lactose. Staph aureus, doesn't matter. Glucose, lactose, sucrose, acid without gas. Pseudomonas is alkaline, no gas. And again, it doesn't really matter with sugar, technically, it uses. Now, for the uh, cinnamon citrate tube. So we have here a, um, and here it's on the top of the second page of the chart, uh, green auger to start with, and get another one that I want you to recognize. So the, let me just again say that the um, DNA auger, the, the turbo tube brought to the Durham tube, and the super citrate green, green auger uh, slant are the three I want you to recognize without just uninoculated. The brown thymol blue is our pH indicator. So we start out green, it's pretty close to uh, neutral. Uh, what we're looking for is the use of sodium citrate as the only uh, carbon source. So it is selective. If they can use that, they'll grow. If not, they can't. So the blue color right here is positive for the uh, using sodium citrate. Uh, we don't really have an enzyme that's specified here. The product is basically ammonia is what we really see because that's what causes the change to a bluish color. So it gets a little more alkaline. And so most of our negatives are basic, gram negative basically positive, but E. coli is not. Okay? So pseudomonas, the enterobacters, Klebsiella, all of those are positive here for the uh, cinnamon citrate to, uh, uh, response. Now, the MRVP, methyl red VP, remember a combo, so we've got both parts in the same tube, and then we check, you know, for the MR response with one reagent, methyl red reagent, check for the VP response with Barrett's A and B and creatine. So we did uh, E. coli and enterobacter. So the uh, methyl red red color after adding the methyl red reagent is positive for like a mixed acid fermentation. So that is E. coli, but enterobacter was negative for that. And then when we do the uh, BP part of the Poscure, again, Barrett's A and Barrett's B followed by some creatine into the tube, let it sit. And then you get this kind of reddish band across the uh, top. And so the enterobacter is positive for this one and the uh, E. coli is negative. Here our, uh, our product is acetoin uh, or as opposed to mixed acid for the uh, other one. All right, so the SIM tube, testing for three things, H2S production, indole production, and then the motility. And so we're showing here with H2S, we've got iron, so it combines the H2S to keep the black color. Uh, obviously, when it's black, you can't tell whether it's mobile or not. But salmonella, 
uh, Proteus are H2S producers. Uh, those two are actually both mobile as well, at least Proteus Parabolus. So the other thing we test for is the uh, indole. And so indole is a uh, product of the breakdown of uh, tryptophan. So tryptophan is part of our substrate. Uh, you put uh, Cobax reagent on the top. If it turns red, it's positive for indole. If it's like this right here, yellow, it's negative for indole. Okay, so right here then we have our uh, indole response. And so again, red with uh, Cobax means it's, it's uh, converted tryptophan to indole. Uh, e. coli is positive here. You can also see the super cloudiness of the uh, tube right there. So that indicates that it is modal as well. And again, E. coli is our modal example. All right, and then this one right here is to show non-modal, but it's an old tube, unfortunately. But again, no uh, COVAX, so it's going to be no uh, indole because it's not red with COVAX, no H2S because it's not black. But as you look down in here, you can see the stab line. There's a bit of a fuzziness, but that's because it's been sitting. The thing you want to look for around the periphery is a transparency in the auger. If it is modal, it'll basically cloud up the whole works, right, if it's modal. But if it's just like at the stab line a little bit fuzzy like this one, but you see nice transparency around the periphery, and that means it is non-modal. So we use ClipVL, I think, for our non-modal example, but Staph aureus also is uh, non-modal. So again, the same thing, so three things in one, okay, three, three tests in one. Now, nitrate is the one in which we have uh, the nitrate to nitrite to ammonia or gas, testing for the uh, nitrate reductase for conversion to nitrate, and, or nitrite, and then the nitrite reductase to ammonia or gas. So after we grow it, we take the three tubes, we put uh, nitrate A and B in each one. If it does turn red after nitrate A and B, which is the one here at this point, then that means it does have the enzyme nitrate reductase. So the nitrate, which is our substrate in all the tubes, is then converted to nitrite. So the product now we have for this one is nitrite, where we have, again, reddish with A and B. Again, that's E. coli. Now the other two tubes are clear, or, or cloudy, gray looking, with the uh, nitrate A and B. So then you put zinc into both of those two. And if it remains colorless, or cloudy looking here with zinc, that means that now we have converted all the way to ammonia gas. Yes, can't tell which one is which. But that's pseudomonas, so it has both enzymes. And then the tube that we was colored with A and B, we put the zinc into turns red, that means that neither enzyme, because the zinc actually converts nitrate to nitrite. That was the interim colors. So with E. coli, we have nitrate reductase, nitrate, and nitrite is our product, so only the one enzyme. With pseudomonas, we had nitrate reductase and nitrite reductase, so we have ammonia gas as our product. So again, colorless with nitrate A, B, and zinc. Interococcus is, is red with zinc, so that means that the nitrate is still in the tube, has neither enzyme. And again, for all three of them, nitrate is the substrate. That's what we're starting with in the uh, tube. So, anybody write a hand? Yes? So even though um, enterococcus is, does it have either enzyme, it's still positive? Well, it turns red, it's the zinc that actually converts the nitrate to the nitrite, right. not, the, not the bacteria. So calling it a positive or negative No, it doesn't because what it's showing is that the, the process, the, the initial substrate is still there. Red is just due to the action of the same and not an enzyme. Okay. All right, so the uh, TSI. So we got the three sugars combined now uh, glucose, lactose, and sucrose. Same uh, pH indicator of phenol red. Uh, we do have iron to check for H2S. So again, yellow color means it's acidic. Uh, here is a typical E. coli response. 
where you get an all yellow uh, slant like we're showing here, and then normally we show evidence of gas. You can see on this picture that we are showing pretty good gas, so when the full auger plug is being pushed up out of the tube, I put a couple of bars back into the incubator over the weekend, but they didn't change, so that says about our E. coli, there is no really gas. More polite this semester than they normally are, I don't know. But uh, anyway, E. coli, just like with the carbo tube, produces gas. So there's no difference here. So it's just usually we see some kind of evidence, but we didn't really see it this time. But remember, E. coli doesn't produce gas. Uh, here's one that shows all acid without gas. So again, like staph uh, orients, for instance. So again, uh, no uh, cracks or pushing up or bubbles or anything in the auger, but yellow. And then pseudomonas, again, all alkaline, just like it is for the carbotubes, and no gas. Okay. So again, the uh, uh, carbohydrate part of it, we look at with the response of the phenol red, yellow for acidic, uh, alkaline, red for alkaline, and then otherwise for the uh, H2S, this is the pattern I usually predict for Proteus, a little different this time. As you can see, big heavy black color in the bottom means it does produce H2S. We are getting some yellow to show. And it's fermenting at least the glucose right there. And then for the salmonella, we get again black at the bottom for the H2S, and then again a red slant. It doesn't really ferment much at all. It ferments the glucose, but not the latter. So salmonella typically red and black, proteus normally yellow. All right, so anybody got a question on that one? All right, so uh, urea bronze. So urea is the substrate, urease is the uh, uh, enzyme. Ammonia and carbon dioxide, primary products right here. Again, you get this color here. Again, it's called pink, pretty like bottom color, right? But whatever, right? you know, as opposed to, to the kind of color of So again, Proteus is a positive for uh, urea response, E. coli is negative. And then here we come to the stuff from today. Okay, so the thing is, again, is that if it's a decarboxylase broth, which is always going to be evident by the mineral oil on the top, that means that the enzyme is called decarboxylase. So we're removing the acid off of an amino acid. So we had one tube with lysine, so that means that would be the substrate here, a second tube with arginine, a third tube with orthine, as we were talking about earlier. And remember again that the important thing is you've got to have the anaerobic condition. That's what the mineral oil is for. And so purple is positive, and the uh, uh, yellow color would be negative. And again, for this particular response, I want you to remember that, that the interobacter uh, erogenes is the one that is positive for lysine, whereas you know, yellow color is going to be negative. And again, Klebsiella is negative for ornithine. Okay? And then the alternative here is the deaminase part. So the enzyme is deaminase, specifically phenylalanine deaminase, but that's for amino acid. So phenylalanine itself is the substrate. Again, what we do is put the uh, ferric chloride onto the uh, slant that we did here a few minutes ago. And if it turns green, like we're showing right here, that's positive for the deamination reaction response to put ferric chloride. Whereas if it says yellow, then it's going to be, of course, negative. All right, and then I just have some other random stuff. So again, just showing uh, H2S negative for the uh, SIM. Uh, you can see it's cloudy, so it's modal. You can see the uh, yellow color rather than red, so it's negative for the indole. Again, another one of the TSI, yellow. Thank you. All right, so anyway, um, thoughts?